I'm Patrick Murphy Racy, Sony Artisan of Imagery. Um, I'm going to be doing a comparison in this video between the A6000 and the A6100. Um, one of them came out in 2014, the other one came out in 2019. You can probably figure out based on the, the model number sequence which is which. But uh, the A6100 is newer and the A6000 has been around for a long, long time. When the A6000 came out, it was a revolutionary camera for me as a professional. Um, it really rocked my world after being shooting all the pro DSLRs from Canon and Nikon. And I began to incorporate it into my work with short lenses because at the time, Sony didn't have any big glass like they do now. Um, and I basically, when I reached out to Sony and asked them to send me an A6000, there was a bit of nostalgia for me because I just have great memories of that camera and had, I made a lot of nice pictures with it back in the day, but I outgrew it when they went to full frame and all the A7s and all the A9s, which we have two now, those are my primary shooters, but I have great memories and I made really nice images back with the A6000. So I called Sony and just asked them to send me an A6000 and a kit lens. Instead, they sent me an A6000, the kit lens I asked for, and they sent me two more kit lenses uh, and another camera called the A6100, which pretty much replaces it as the sort of, um, uh, well, it doesn't replace it because the A6000 is still around. And the point of my video was supposed to be how relevant the A6000 is still, especially when you compare it to like a, five, uh, a 70 Mark II from Canon, um, which has better low light and a faster motor drive and still APS-C sensor, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, this video, unlike most of the ones I make, is really not geared towards professional photographers. This is more geared towards amateur or kind of a hobbyist. And so if that's you, keep watching. If you're a pro, you may want to pass on this one. I'm just giving you a fair warning. So into the deck we go. A6000 versus A6100, which should we choose? Um, I wanted to kind of spend some time talking about each camera, and first and foremost, I wanted to talk about the A6000, which was launched in 2014. It's only $398 for the body only, which is really, really inexpensive, even by today's standards. Um, it has a 24 megapixel sensor, and the ISO is capable of going all the way up to 25,600. Uh, it has an 11 frame per second mechanical shutter, it has an XAVC-S video codec which, uh, with a 30-minute clip limit. Now, that's a big deal. Uh, the XAVC-S, I want to kind of explain this. When the A6000 first came out, like you might have one from way back, when it first came out, it had AVC-HD, which is a different codec. The AVC-HD codec is not as good as the newer one. And what's really cool is Sony began, as soon as they figured out how to put, put the newer codec into their newer cameras, they didn't forget the A6000. And they did a firmware update that allowed a backwards compatibility with a newer video codec, even though the camera's from 2014. And this is kind of typical of Sony. When they make an advance, if they can update the camera going backwards, they will through firmware updates. So when you buy a Sony body, you may buy it at the store you get it from, and it has a certain uh, sort of set of uh, specifications and functionality, but Sony is always working to improve that functionality. And when they can, they'll do a firmware update, give you more options, different menus, selections, all kinds of things. And this is a benefit of the A6000, that you get to use the better codec, the more professional codec, even though you bought the camera back in 2014. So if you have an A6000 right now, it would be worth checking to see if you're, when you go to video and you select the video codec, see if XVACS is an option. If it's not there, it just means you need to hook up your camera to a computer, go to Sony's website, and download the upgrade, and then you'll get the better codec. You'll get a few other things too. Um, but I think, think it's so cool that you, that even though Sony has sold you the camera, they're also adding value to it after the sale. Instead of making you buy a new one, every time you want new features, which has been typical of Canon and Nikon forever. So, sorry Canon and Nikon, but I have to say that. Um, so back to the deck. Um, there are 179 phase detect autofocus points in the A6000. Now this is a big deal. 
Because if you shoot sports or kids or anything moving, any kind of action, auto racing, whatever, um, 179 autofocus points in 2014 was unbelievable. It was more than double some of the cameras out there from Canon. Um, Nikon had a few more, but they not in the lower end. So in the kind of low price point back in 2014 and even now, most of the Canon and Nikons don't have that many autofocus points. And of course, the more points you have that cover the viewfinder, the more accurate and fast the autofocus system is. So it's a kind of a big deal. Okay, the both cameras share a 1.4 M dot EVF, which means that the, uh, the, the electronic viewfinder, when you look through the EVF where your eye goes, it's not going to be as nice as the newer ones, but this is also a bottom of the line camera. It's like a low end camera in, in the Sony lineup. So if that's really important to you, there's, you know, you might go to the a6600 for instance, but, um, remember that the image quality is still good. So, um, you might be able to live without the big fancy viewfinder and save yourself a lot of money. It, it's all up to you. And then last, um, the A6000 is an amazing 0.45 pounds with a battery and an SD card installed. I can't explain to you how cool this is. Like this camera, here's the kit lens. If I take that off, this is less than half a pound. I mean, it's itty bitty. So that's the, that's the A6000. It's got the hot shoe on it. Um, it's a very small camera. Now you can see the, uh, the APS-C sensor in there. Uh, it's just small really really tiny i just love how itty bitty it is it's really cool now when you attach the lens it gets you know a little bit heavier but not not much so um and this lens is kind of neat this kit lens is what's called a pz lens so you can you can wide angle and telephoto electronically with a servo zoom which is kind of cool if you shoot a lot of video um this is a big deal because it means that you can have you can have the camera at your eye and with your thumb you can be zooming in and out, uh, which is very, very nice. Um, mechanical zooms never kind of look right on video. Uh, they're kind of herky-jerky, and they just don't often look right. So, um, But that was the A6000 with the 16-50 to lens. There's another lens that was also made back in the day. This is this is available when the A6000 came out. This is the 18-105 um, the to F4. What's cool about this lens is it's got a lot of glass in it. So if you look... This is a big old hunk of glass up front. It's much larger in, in, in size than the, the 16 to 50. But the big attribute of this lens is it's a, a static aperture lens. So as you zoom back and forth, you're always at f4. So it's, it's a very, very fast lens uh, and also has the PZ option. So you can like zoom in and out. Um, and by the way, this lens is what comes when you buy an FS5. This is the kit lens that they supply with the FS5, which is a pro video camera. It's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, that's that's the uh, A6000 for 398 bucks. So let's now look at the A6100, which is $598. So a full $200 more. This camera was launched in 2019. It also has a 24 megapixel sensor, but don't be fooled. It is not the same sensor as what's in the A6000. And here is where you really see the difference. Note the highest ISO is 512,000. Excuse me, that's a typo. Uh, that should say 1,000, not 100. Sorry about that. But uh, 512,000 ISO. And the camera has what's called real-time tracking. Now, real-time tracking was developed by Sony specifically for the A9. And it was a technology that was designed for the A9 II, that they later made available in the original A9 with a firmware update. Sound familiar? Where they're going backwards and improving cameras they already made in the past with newer technology advances. The fact that the A6100 has real-time tracking and shares this unbelievably smart artificial intelligence way of autofocusing is insane. And I, I can't go into detail because that's not what this video is about, but I have three different videos on real-time tracking, so... When you finish this one, you might want to look at those, or other people have them too. But real-time tracking is like the greatest thing that's happened to autofocus since autofocus became a thing. Um, and the fact that you can get it in a camera that's inexpensive is phenomenal. So Sony should be congratulated for that. Um, so uh, real-time tracking, 512,000 ISO, not 512,000, sorry about that. 
11 frame per second mechanical shutter. The A6100 is capable of not just having XAVCS video codec, but also 4K. So I want to kind of review this a little bit because HD is 720p. Full HD is 1080p. Um, the A6100 can shoot at 2160p. It's like wicked cool. Um, in fact, you can pull a still frame of video off of a 4K file video. So you can shoot video, and then you, in an editor, you can pull a still frame of video out, and it's an 8 megabyte file. So 4K video is phenomenally good. Um, and even though people aren't using 4K as a delivery, there are things you can do, like Ken Burns effects, when you have that big, huge file that you can't do in a, in a full HD file or an HD file. So if you shoot a lot of video, you probably need to be looking at the A6100 and not the A6000. So there you have that. Um, there are 425 phase detect autofocus points in the A6100. Now this is versus 179 in the A6000. So that's a huge benefit. Again, if you shoot like water, fowl, if you shoot bird, if you're a birder, if you're shooting sports action or kids running around, you're going to be way better off with this camera because the, the more autofocus points and the real-time tracking system is really going to assist you in making sure you nail that shot. Um, 1.4M dot EVF. Note this weight difference. So the A6100 weighs 0.87 pounds with a battery and SD card installed. So it's a little tiny bit heavier, but not much so. Uh, and it's funny because when you pick them up, they seem the same. This is the A6100. Um, that's what it looks like. It looks exactly like the A6000, but notice it says 4K on the top. Um, the grip on it is is much better. It's like it feels better for like a large like I have big hands. This camera feels so much better than the A6000. Um, and uh, so again, it's a much much you know nicer kind of way to work. I think in a lot of ways. And last, the A6100 has the benefit of being newer, and therefore it has a, a newer, more updated menu interface. And it's much easier to navigate. There are color coding in the, in the menus. It's, it's just a, a really nice way to work. Um, so kind of the big question is, is it worth the extra 200 bucks to get the A6100 over the A6000? And I would say absolutely yes. Um, there's no question it would be better. Um, now, uh, if you only shoot outdoors in bright sunlight, if that's the only thing you do with your photography, A6000 is going to be fine for that. But if you go indoors and shoot with a flash sometimes, or if you shoot performance or any kind of action photography, man, you're going to be so much better off the A6100. I promise you that. Okay, so which lens is best? There are a total of four uh, lenses that are available for your kind of kit version lens. The very first one is the 16 to 50 PZ lens. And that's the one that I showed you that was on the A6000 originally. Uh, it's a very nice, lightweight, tiny, small. This is a great travel lens. Um, it also has the PZ option, so you can zoom telephoto wide without having, uh, you know, for videos. That's a really great one. The next one that they made uh, in chronological order is the 18 to 105 f4. We talked about that lens as being a static aperture lens that is very, very good, fast, but with a static aperture. So the aperture does not change as you zoom from 18 to 105. So this is good for low light for sure. Um, when they came out with the uh, A6100 and the A6600, they also came out with a brand new kit lens, which is this one here. This is the uh, 18 to 135. Now this lens has a much greater zoom range than the others, um, and it's still small and lightweight. It's very compact. Um, so this is another option. This lens in particular is very, very sharp. I would say that this is much sharper lens than this than the 16 to 50 or the 18 to 105. So if you're really kind of a discerning shooter, um, that one is special, and uh, it really is a fantastic lens. It's it's very sharp at at the wide at 28 and it's it's it holds its sharpness throughout the entire length of the zoom it is a floating aperture lens however um, so it's going to slow down as you zoom you know more telephoto side but it's a very very good lens 
So let's take a look at all the different options because we have three out of four here today. Um, the first one we showed you was the 16 to 50, which is 298. The second one I showed you is the 18 to 105, which is $648. The third one I just showed you is the 18 to 135, um, and that's $648. This is a kind of a big deal to choose between these two that cost the same amount. Um, so is speed more your thing, or if you if you do video, the 18 to 105 is probably a better choice. If you're really a discerning still shooter, the 18 to 135 is probably the best way to go. And if you're going to go on a trip to Europe and you only want to take one camera and one lens, that that's the one to take is the 18 to 135. It really it just covers everything. So, um, and then last uh, in that group, I wanted to mention I don't have it here. But they made kind of a pro lens. It's a it's the, a pro lens that a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time. Many professionals shoot APS-C, and it's a totally legitimate format to shoot in. You don't have to shoot full frame to be a pro. Um, just like you don't have to be you know shooting full frame to make beautiful pictures. Um, but they came out with a 16 to 55 f 2.8 G lens. Now that's 1,298 bucks. But if you want the best lens for APS-C in a wide-angle zoom, that's it. Uh, absolutely bar none. Um, and then last but not least, I wanted to also mention that Sony makes a very, very good 10 to 18 millimeter f4. This is a G lens. It's OSS. It's $900. But if you do a lot of interior work or you're doing a lot of very serious landscape work and you need really super wide, 8, 10 to 18 is equivalent to 15 millimeter to 27 millimeter zoom. And remember, it's all at f4. Uh, so the 10 to 18 pairs up really well with any of the kit lenses that we mentioned, the, all four of them. Uh, they really can't go wrong with it uh, if you need that super, super wide perspective. Um, and uh, basically, I wanted to put a word out that, you know, I don't know what's the best lens for you. I don't know what the best camera is. That's something you have to decide. Hopefully this video will help you. Um, I want to make a plea to you to buy locally. Please, if you have a camera store in your community, in your city or your town, um, if it's maybe an hour drive to get to a camera store, please patronize your camera store because they're closing at an alarming rate. Um, the photo industry has been absolutely devastated by the coronavirus pandemic. And many local mom you know, privately owned uh, non-chain camera stores are really struggling. They need your help. So if you have um, a camera store within an hour's drive of your home, when you make your purchases for, you know, if you're going to buy a new lens or a camera or whatever, please go and patronize your local camera store because otherwise you won't have it when you need it. Um, and also, it's great to go to a place where you can buy the equipment and get your qu your question answers. Like Amazon's great, but they're going to charge you tax and they don't have a clue what they're selling. They have no idea. It's like a total impersonal thing. Um, many people that um, utilize camera stores in the way they should have fantastic relations with salespeople. Almost all camera salespeople are really accomplished photographers in their own right. And they really are a great resource for you to try to figure out what like what next lens to buy, if you should switch systems, what you know, what if you want to upgrade the camera, if you need a flash, if you want to get into studio photography, whatever, they are gonna be fantastic assets for you to have versus going online and just buying it in a very impersonal way. So if you don't live in a place where you have a camera store that's accessible, um, I have one for you. It's bedfords.com. Um, they are in Arkansas and Oklahoma. I think they also do business in Texas and in New Jersey. So if you're in those states, you will have to pay sales tax. But if you're not in those states, there's no sales tax. And if you buy your gear from them, whatever you get from them, Sony or whatever, um, when you check out... Um, you can put in a code PMR and you'll get 5% off your total order. Um, now, a friend of mine just bought a new 600 F4 Sony lens for 13 grand and he saved over $600 in doing that because of this code. So um, if you're going to buy a bunch of stuff or even just buy something small, uh, again, if you have a local camera store you can utilize, do it. If you don't, Bedford's is a really good family-owned place. It's a very small chain uh, just in operating in two states. 
They are fantastic on the phone. Again, their salespeople are really knowledgeable. They're great guys. So if you're going to buy it used, I would recommend usedphotopro.com up in uh, Indianapolis. My friends at Roberts, they do a great job if you're going to try and find something used. Um, that's it for me for this video. I hope it's been helpful. Um, the A6000 is still a relevant camera. It's just not as good as the A6100. My intention and goal in this video was to, to do a video about how cool the A6000 is, but when Sony sent me the A6100 and I started playing with it, I realized very quickly how much better it is. So again, if you shoot in low light, you got to go that way. If you shoot video, you got to go A6100. It's the only way to go. So I'll stop talking now. I work very hard on YouTube to respond to comments. Um, unless you insult me, then I want to respond at all. Um, but uh, if you have questions or comments about something I've said, if I've made a mistake, I do that sometimes in my videos. I will mention a wrong price or something or whatever. Help me out and let me know, and I will claim that mistake as my own and um, go on from there. But if you have other questions about other lenses, uh, about the A6000, you know, something that will fit on this or whatever, please don't hesitate to put it in. I try my best to respond within 24 hours. Um, but be patient because I'm a working photographer and I do have assignments and stuff. So thank you so much for watching. This is Sony artisan Patrick Murphy Racy. Appreciate you and stay safe.